Okay. Where are they? There they are. Oh! I've never seen this hair before. Is that a new hairstyle? Looks pretty though. It's a new hairstyle and you can't get it? You can't get this yet? <laughs> I'm surprised! I thought you would get it from like... Like, especially from like the, the new MGP event. Like, I thought there'd be like new items and whatnot, but I guess not. What the hell? <laughs> okay. It's a little sad. Uh, I really wish there was more hairstyles in the future. <sighs> ah, that's a blown cob- uh, That's blown the cobwebs away. Time to return to work. Hello. Goodness me, look who it is! How incredibly serendipitous, uh, serendipitous that I would turn into you of all people, uh, people. I was part of a team which designed the Ragnarok, you see, of course, and we've recently begun the process of combing through the vessel's flight log data. The primary objective of your journey to Ultima Thule was to save our star, and countless others, of course, but it also provided us with an invaluable trove of information. Records of places and events we could only dream of. Her safe return uh, gave much to be thank uh, gave us much to be thankful thankful for. As it so happens, one of the things we pulled from the log was transmission of unknown origin, something the ship must have intercepted during its flight. We believe it to be an audio message, but even our most talented linguists have been unable to decipher the language. Interesting. For a while here, it seemed we must accept defeat. But today may be the day we finally solve the mystery! If you would be so inclined, would you care to come along to Thomasine? It seems fitting to have one of the Ragnarok's original passengers present to hear history being made. Nice. Thomasine. That's, um... Ah, I see. Big ship! Big ship! There she is. That's a cute emote stand. Idol stand. <laughs> ah, there you are! This is where we get to meet the engineers from Garland Ironworks, who, I am told, potentially hold the key to unlocking our mystery transmission. It should be along any- at any moment. Is it gonna be Sid? <laughs> Please tell me. <laughs> Sorry, we're late. We had some trouble- uh, we had some trouble finding the right- Gods, is that you, Nemu? The woman herself! I ran into her at the harbor, and thought if anyone deserved to hear this mes uh, message deciphered, it was, uh, it was Nemu Okire. No argument here, but bugger me if you don't have the knack for being in the right place at the right time. This actually has more to do with you than you might think, so please, do stick around. Shall we pick up from where we left off, then? As I was saying, we think this transmission of the Rag in the Ragnarok intercepted is a message of some kind, albeit in, in a language entirely alien to our ears, okay? Alien being the operative word here. Considering we received the message out in the Great Expanse, its origin was likely some distant star. I have a feeling it's from... It has to be at least like from like... From Omega, right? Because this is what it's... This is what it's all about, right? It should be. Omega's original star. Unfortunately, our list of off-world allies is presently rather short. Thus, we were resigned to the fact that the meaning behind the message would remain beyond our un understanding. Hmm. 
one of my colleagues, however, refused to give up. She remembered the ironworks engineers who had been so helpful in the, in the construction of the Ragnarok and turned to them for insight into our seemingly impossible problem. Do you know what Wedge said when he heard what was going on? Oh. We should have Omega listen to it. I bet it can tell us what me what the message means. Not the Omega you beat in the rift, of course. He's talking about the toy that trundles around with Alpha. The little model we made. We originally designed it to follow a chosen target and not much else. I've seen it act in ways that... Well, it's like it has a mind of its own. Oh, it's become sentient! <laughs> then I got to thinking about those documents you lot sent the chief. The full report on the final days. In the part about Omega Civilization, it said their people discovered how to convert the mind into data and store it outside the body. Okay. Timing being what it was, I wonder if Omega didn't somehow transfer its consciousness into our model right before you put an end to the real one. Maybe? Hey, hey, it's Alpha! Ah! So, in an effort to get to the bottom of that, as well as take a crack at this indecipherable message, we decided to make some modifications. With help from Labyrinthos technicians, we've upgraded our toy Omega with a fully functional vocalization module. Ah! Wedge! Alpha! <laughs> Omega! We played the transmission for Omega, and I think it's ready to share. Ah! Are you in there, Omega? Question mark. Oh my god! Affirmative. If by Omega you are referring to my consciousness, rather than my entire former chassis, uh, chassis existing inside this considerably smaller frame. Prediction. You will formulate sem uh, several misconceptions. These I shall preemptively dismiss based on the following facts. 1. Vocalization module aside, this chassis remains unmodified from the design constructed by engineers Biggs and Wedge. I evaluate its combat capabilities to be on par with a mortal infant. <laughs> 2. The mechanism which allowed me to perform an emergency transfer of my consciousness was installed in my previous body. Oh, it is! With the, con with the destruction of that body, I am rendered incapable of replicating such a feat. Oh, it is the same. It, it is the same Omega. Okay. Oh. Should this current material from the dis be destroyed or cease to function, all cognitive awareness or presence I possess will also be lost. Conclusion: I present no threat to you or your star, nor do my projections indicate the necessity to inflict harm. Yeah, so they can do anything. He could it that Omega couldn't do anything to us, even even if it can. <laughs> it's just a little little model. He's baby. He's baby. In the fraction of a moment before my annihilation in the rift, I re-examined my directives. If I am to fulfill my purpose as an evolving construct, then I must continue my journey for improvement for as long as I exist. I must acquire this heart of yours, this strength of soul. Well, there you have it. And it's not wrong about its combat capabilities. It'd be more likely to damage itself than the thing it was trying to attack. But let's not forget the reason we brought you here in the first place. What about the transmission they played for you? Could you recognize the language? 
Affirmative. It was transferred in a planned Galactic Basic. Pan? Galactic Basic? A common language in comparatively extensive usage throughout the worlds we have conquered. Which means you can finally tell us what the message said! That is the language you understand, yes? I understand it perfectly. I am fluent in over six million distinct dialectal codings. Blip! <laughs> Blip! My cooperation in this matter, however, is conditional. Elaboration. Your chief Sid utilizes the floor as part of his unorthodox filing system, which allowed me to scan the report on the final days. I am aware that my home star, the one you call Alphatron, was obliterated in the aftermath of Sir and Meteon's meeting. Yeah. The existence of Dino the existence of Dinos has not previously factored into my projections. But I now comprehend the concept. In theory. What fails to compute is why the Omicrons were not immune to its effects. Dynamis should have no influence on a race which possesses no heart. And yet, Sir expressed to Meteon a desire to cease existing. Illogical. I must pursue this anomaly further, until the full equation becomes clear to me. I must analyze all elements of the final days and deepen my understanding of this heart's of the heart's intangible properties. To expedite this process, I acquire I require an external interpretation of those sections of the report which continue to produce errors in my calculations. <laughs> Look at Alpha! He's sleeping! <laughs> All of this is boring him! I request the assistance of Nemu Okire, as one who experienced the ravages of ultimate despair on multiple fronts and displayed immeasurable heart in engineering my defeat. She is the optimal choice to fulfill this role. So we either agree to your conditions or you tell us nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry to put you in a spot like this, Nemu. If you have the time, and the patience, to spare, we'd all be grateful if you could hear the toys, uh, humor the toys, uh, demands. Oh, and you do Alpha? Has Alpha dozed off? I suppose the subject wa was a bit technical. Aw, <laughs> oh, you baby! Bloop. Rouse yourself, Alpha. You must listen to and consider these matters, even as I must. <laughs> Why don't you make a trip out of it? You know, actually visit the places that has the, uh, things Omega wants to ask about. It'll make explaining stuff easier, for one, and also keep Alpha awake and alert. I think that's a good idea. Quee! Click what? <laughs> Setting aside the matter of Sir, there are three elements of the report on which I desire clarification. The first of these concerns uh, the progression of the final days in Razat Han. I recognize no pattern in those who succumbed to the transformation and those who did not. That's a bit of a trick if you wanted to chat with the locals. How about we lend you an airship? We do not require such outmoded technology. Namu's teleportation spell is the most efficient option for long distance travel. This chassis is a model, essentially a toy. An alpha, despite his organic composition, is indistinguishable from a stuffed bo uh, from a stuffed doll. <laughs> okay. Conclusion. We qualify as material possessions. Pick us up, and you can teleport the three of us to our destination. Yes. Bye-bye! See ya!
uh... Let's go! Oh, we're in route to hunt! Nice. Quay! Quay quay! <laughs> Sensors indicate we have arrived at Mrazat Han. Objective. Identify factors for resistance to involuntary transformation. Hypothesis. Unaltered survivors of the final days will display significant strength of heart. Confirming this theory will require the cooperation of live subjects. Where is the ward designated for residential habitation? Understood. Hama, set as our sub destination. Please take the lead and select the subjects we are to interview. <gasps> Is he gonna? Are they gonna accompany us? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I love it. Yes, please. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, let's go to this. Oh, they're so cute! Warning. Please avoid stairs whenever possible. My projections indicate high risk probability for accidental slippage leading to catastrophe uh, leading to catastrophic structural damage. Stepped inclines also increase my energy consumption by 63%. In mortal terms, they tire me out. Taking into account the difference in indiv individual limb strength. The design is inherently flawed. A convenient step right height for one is an exhausting trial for another. Were I to oversee the civic design of the settlement, I would construct a slope conveyor belt which enable automatic travers traversal. Zero personal ex energy expenditure. <laughs> okay, we can't go the stairs, I guess. I respect. Quick, quick! Alpha chirps enthusiastically, apparently unfazed by the prospect of climbing the stairs. <laughs> oh. uh, let's try to avoid it if we can, I guess. But no, respect. Respect. Oh no, wait, there's a TP here, isn't it? There is! Let's take a teleport there. Because I think we can do that now. Yes, we can! Hello. I think I remember this kid. Hey, don't I know you? Yes! After the beasts were taken care of! You told me to join everyone in the square. Thanks to you, I was there when Vritra gave his speech, and I found out who Varshan really was. It's a shame we don't really we don't get to play like we used to. But Mama says Vritra has been busy putting the city back in order. Maybe I can work for him one day. When I'm a man grown. Fritra. Midgar Sormer's offspring, yes? And this child wishes to put himself at the worm's command. That he might make his own contribution to society. A pattern emerges. I predict that the Hanish survivors are those who had ingested Fritra's blood and became his draconic minions. <laughs> um. No? Well, dragons were no match for our civilization's might. Their combat capabilities are not to be underestimated. It is likely they would experience emotions of dread or uncertainty, as exhibited by lesser beings in times of undue stress. Dragons? I'm not a dragon, and I never ingested anyone's blood either. Ew! Didn't Estinian <laughs> ingested his blood? Kinda, in a way. He kind of was fused with Nidhogg, as far as I know. You are not of Reach's Horde, so you possess no m hidden means to fight off the beasts. What's a fear then? You were frightened? Yes, I was frightened. I just hid and hoped every they wouldn't find me. At least until she told me it was safe to come out. 
Oh. All right, next person. Oh, so, okay. That's the lady. That's the lady who knew um that one merchant. Forgot his name already. Oh no. Uh, Calzal, I think. I think that's his name. Oh, hello again. You're the one who came to ask me questions about Calzal. I'm glad to see you're looking well after all the unpleasantness. I remember the burning skies and hearing the screams, but truth be told, I'm still confused as to what actually happened. I only know it was an unusual for entire families to go missing. Many of my neighbor's houses lie empty even now. Calzal's place is one of them. He had no close relatives to speak of, and I heard it was members of the consortium who came to remove his belongings. Oh. Oh yeah. What a, what a terrible thing to have to do. Blip. Terrible? Kazal's passing was recorded in a report. Clearing out his domicile and readying it for a new habitation seems an appropriate reallocation of resources. Dear me, what a clever little contraption. But of course I'm not against making use of his quarters. That would be wasteful. It's simply that Kalzal was always such a vig uh, vigorous person. All that passion, all those dreams, suddenly gone. I feel the same sorrow for everyone who has lost, seeing the remnants of those terrible, uh, of those vibrant lives packed away in boxes. That is what I mean by terrible. Are you learning? Are you learning, little guy? Please continue the questioning. This auditory sensors are inferior, but I am able to hear your conversation, uh, conversations with sufficient clarity. <laughs> Melancholy man. I think I've seen him before, too. Hmm? Are you a traveler? Please, if you have a moment, I could use an outsider's perspective. I think I've seen him before. You see, I was one of those who sought to escape the madness plaguing the world by fleeing to the moon. Oh, yeah. Not that we ever, not that we ever went in the end. So here I am. Recently returned from Charlene. Except now things are strained between my sister and I. Since she, cho she chose to stay and I chose to leave. Oh, that's... Uh, <laughs> that's kind of tough. I asked her to help me find work. And she suggests I look somewhere that isn't Davner. As if I wanted to abandon my home. Ugh, it makes me so angry. Your point is unclear. You elected to relocate this to the star's satellite. Thus, the, your relative now perceives you as a negative light? Your sibling's judgment is an error. Based on the information made available to Hanish citizens, your decision to withdraw, withdraw to the moon was both logical and correct. Conversely, the decision to remain in Radzat Han, despite the low probability of survival, defies explanation. Perhaps her reasoning pathways are faulty. Th that that's right! I'm not quite sure what you're saying, but I'm right, aren't I? Or so I'd like to think. The problem is, I understand why my sister feels this way. I almost decided to go and going myself. Even then, I wasn't sure that leaving behind everything I loved was the right choice. And with the way all that turned out, I... Nemu, I require a moment to process this input. Let us move apart and discuss our findings. I see. Oh, It's okay. It's okay. You'll sort it out. Blip. Processing data. Evaluating hypothesis against accumulating evidence. I offered an optimal analysis of each subject's testimony. 
Yet each time their responses conflicted with my assessment. Without identifying the root of this conflict, I will be unable to properly define what constitutes strength of heart. Um... <laughs> perhaps this matter is beyond you. Um, perhaps the heart you seek lies in the conflict itself? An interesting observation. It is possible my base criteria is an error. In which case, it is imperative that I continue this learning process and repair any funda uh, fundamental misconceptions. Next, I wish to interact with an individual who endured similar circumstances to Kalzal prior to his transformation. Are you acquainted with any local merchants who had dealings with him? Um... Oh! Flip! Dinja Baha of the Rudavin, uh, Ruveda Fibers? Acknowledged. Subdestination set. Okay. Oh! Is it the here guy? Let's go over here though. I wanna know what he's saying. Quick way! Quay quay! No. Alpha looks back and forth between Omega and the Hamsa, showing visible concern. Oh no. Halt, Nemu. Do not proceed beyond the fence. In this body, birds of that size represent, uh, represent lethal, unthinking threats. They will peck my casing apart, <laughs> searching for meat that does not exist. Conversely, Alpha can correctly identify my absence of nutritional content. If only he would apply that intelligence towards maintaining a regular feeding schedule, or habits adversely affect his mobility. <laughs> it's funny. Hey, it's you! Well, well, look what it is! I must thank you again for your help in moving our textiles. Recovering from those tragic events has been difficult, of course. But with everyone pulling together, we've managed to get things back up and running. Uh, Jin -na Jina Baha, I come with questions related to that tragedy. Specifically, your survival of the final days. Although you are similar to Kaozal in many respects, he succumbed to the transformation, and you are not. And you did not. Why? What is the critical difference between you and him? What? I... I'm sure I don't know. I'm not especially brave or courageous, if that's what you're asking. Perhaps being focused on protecting our workshops kept me from spinning into a panic. Still, I imagine Kalzal would have been feeling the same sense of responsibility. Perhaps the weight of it all is what invited his demise. You, are a, you were of the same mind, resolved to the same purpose. Yet your strength of heart, of spirit, was not equal. If merely emulating the individual is insufficient, then some other unseen factor must be involved. Ahem. Not to interrupt these deep philosophical musings, but do you think I could ask you a small favor? There's a man by the name of Nashvan who has been helping us out here a while he gets back on his feet. I have a feeling he'd benefit from speaking with you. Leave by the eastern exit, and you should find him out, uh, just outside, organizing some new inventory items. Okay. Quick, quick! Quick, quick! Quick! <laughs> Aw. Alpha puffs out his chest proudly. Seemly, uh, seeming to imply that his ironworks uniform is the best attire anyone would uh, could wear. No, <laughs> oh, he's a good boy. The equipment being manufactured here, it is worn to perform specific duties. Yes, conceptually, it seems ano analogous to pra uh, to our practice of switching frames to better serve our mission objectives. I, for example, did not begin existence with Omega with the Omega model. I was originally supplied with a standard issue Omicron chassis. Okay, 
serial number M017. On this world, that alphanumeric combination would be considered my given name. Such designations are drawn from our nearly infinite register of celestial bodies to avoid the possibility of duplication. Furthermore, the cluster known as M017 is better expressed in our language as the Omega Nebula. The name word I use to introduce myself to your kind. Though you associate Omega with the advanced weapon uh, construct uh, with the advanced weapon construct, it is also my name, and I see no reason to change it, no matter which frame I inhabit. Mmm. Hello. That's all our orders accounted for, and everything looks to be of good qua uh, quality. Kamala will be pleased. Kamala? You! You were with the Scions! You were there! Oh! Yes, I'm sure of it! I'll never forget that day. Isn't he the dad that lost his son? You and your friends helped us escape when the people began changing to beasts. Oh, it is! My own son. He was... afflicted. Then that huge monstrosity, uh, monstrosity loomed right over him and... <sighs> I remember... my heart turning into ice, freezing in place. The saw trap came to me, uh, came to my aid, but then he too was gone. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. The memories run together in my mind, like flashes from a nightmare. Only the words of your comrade still ring clear. I repeated them over and over like the mantra as I fled for my life. A yeah, good thing Raha was there. You must run. For their sake and your own. No. It all seems so surreal. Which was probably what saved me from the transform transformation. The truth of it didn't begin to sink in until the worst of it was over. I have not the words to describe how I felt then. The sorrow. The overwhelmingly sense of helplessness. I may be still wallowing in misery if not for my old friend, uh, Jin, Jin Nabaha. I'd lost my will to work, and he encouraged me with kind words and objads. Odd jobs. Now, somehow, I live again. I am thankful to him, the courageous Ahewan, and to you. If you see your comrades, please let them know their efforts were not in vain. Oh, I'm tearing up. <laughs> oh. You said your, <laughs> you said you lost your will to work. This signifies a cessation of efforts to maintain basic life functions, yes? What changed to extract you from that stagnation? An offer to work from Dinja Baha should mean little to one without the desire to accept it. Was it some manner of mortal instinct? A primal need to survive and thrive? Instinct? No. No, it wasn't that. If anything, my instincts were telling me to lay down and welcome an end to the pain. Every day I think of my boy's final moments. I think of how scared he must have been. How it must have hurt. And I want to scream my throat raw. Sawtrap 2 still haunts my dreams. I see him being swallowed whole, 
and a jolt awake in the cold sweat. But something changed when Jin Nabaha came to me. I looked up and saw that, even without my son or Ahewan, the world, cons uh, the world around me continued to turn. And because that fact grieved me so, I knew it fell to me to live on and remember them. Strange, isn't it? What drives me to rise in the morning is the very sorrow which once crippled me. Now, I really must return to my work. To lose this job after everything I just said would be poor jest indeed. <laughs> May the sisters keep you well. Oh. Sorrow. The emotion generated by mortals when their ideals fail to materialize. This I have observed. Yet when I listened to how Nashvan's sorrow served to rescue him from near-fatal despondency, his logic eludes me. Am I incapable of perceiving the full measure of the heart's properties? My best projections fail to predict our subjects' responses, and despite their most uh, their almost equal occupational and mental parameters. In Jabaha and Kalzal exhibited different reactions to the dynamis effect. I am no closer to recognizing the pattern for involuntary transformations, and your ephemeral mortal spirits confound me as much if not more than you they did before. The hearts of others were ever shrouded in mystery. Bloop. Even to you? This matter is more complicated than I initially calculated. <laughs> if those possessed of heart cannot fathom the behavior of their own kind, then my lack of understanding is inevitable. My investigations here are exhausted. In Leo, of a full conclusion, I will settle for storing this accumulated data for future analysis. Let us progress to the next element of the report, that you might continue my education. <whistles> Goodbye. Oh, there's a gift. Okay. Our next destination will be Camp Broken La Glass. I desire elaboration on the dealings between the Isabar Contingent and the citizens of Garlemald. The report described the Contingent's purpose as the salvation of the local populace. Furthermore, both factions faced a common enemy in the Talafaroi. Why did they not immediately combine forces to their mutual benefit? This inconsist inconsistency requires closer examination. Nemu, initiate teleportation. <laughs> it's like, take us there. Take us there, mortal. Ooh. Teleportation successful. Evaluating immediate environs. A cold weather region by Ethereus standards, but significantly uh, significantly less extreme than the star with ice planet classification. Oh my god, there's a planet icier than like this? Jeez. <laughs> this body should not be unduly impended. In contrast to Alpha and his uncontrollable shivering, 
my frame appears highly resistant to low temperatures. Retrieving data. Records indicate that remnants of the contingent force and a number of Imperial citizens yet inhabit this, this location. We must speak with the representatives from both factions and explore their respective attitudes. Bleep. Proceed. Resistance delegate. <gasps> oh, it's this guy! <laughs> the one who gave- uh, the one who was like- uh, at, um, Eulis, like, it's the little things that makes <laughs> everything worthwhile, isn't it? <laughs> that one scene. Oh, it's you. Nemu? Come to see how things are progressing, have you? I can't speak for the overall strategy, but communication with the locals uh, has become a damn sight easier since Eulis and his soldiers stepped in to help. Oh, and we still face our share of uh, distrust, of course. Some folks even think we're enslaving minds with our foreign magics. <laughs> we have Anima to thank for uh, putting that idea in their heads. <laughs> but all things considered, I'd say we're doing pretty well. Establishing, uh, establishing an open dialogue was the first big step. Query. Your level, of, uh, you consider this level of progress acceptable? The reality of your efforts falls far short of the ideal. If your aim is to provide efficient succor to the local populace, then absorbing their numbers into your command uh, structure would be the optimal path. Oh, I wouldn't want to go that far. We're not looking to take over their nation. If we're going to do this the if we're to do this the right way, we need to recognize and respect each e each other's way of life. So while it may not be the easiest solution, I agree with the contingent's slow and steady approach. I'm just happy we're saving lives. Oh. Yeah, what do you think? I recommend you move at a brisk pace. The exertion will raise your body temperature, preventing you and Alpha from freezing to death. It's okay. I'm used to the cold. Where? Oh. Emanciated refugee. Do I remember him? I don't think I know him. Victor Smalls. Ah. <sighs> I don't think I remember this guy. <laughs> Have you come to laugh at me? A wretch who's who chose to lose Lucina. Oh, a wretch who chose to lose Lucina and her sister rather than accept your help. The fool who ended up reliant upon your charity, nonetheless. Looks like you have no choice. Well, perhaps I deserve your desertion, derision. My compatriots surely scorn my failed conviction. I have, ashamed, I have shamed my people and brought this honor upon my nation. I am no better than a kept beast. My pride sold for a bowl of uh, for a bowl of feed. But my soul, nay, that you shall not have. I refused your honeyed offers of a new home. This land is where I belong, and this is where I shall remain. Bleep. You demonstrate opposition to the contingent's overtures. On what basis did you refuse this cooperation? The data suggests the local populace is struggling to reduce bare minimum of sustenance. <laughs> Omega spilling in the facts. Have you some secret strategy for survival? Or do your orders compel you to accept your present misfortune? What? Must I be mocked by a magic tech toy now? No, I have no secret strategy. No binding orders. But I, uh, I but comport myself as any true Garlean patriot would. Uncompromising. Unbending. Blast it all. Once again, this input is unanticipated. Let us move aside and process what we have learned. Damn. Sad. Accessing and analyzing recorded data. Integration complete. I have evaluated this most recent input 
and made comparisons to our discoveries in Radzat Han. Consistent only is in their consistent only in their inconsistency, the responses from both the contingent member and the imperial citizen were highly irrational. Conversely, any Omicron considering their predicaments would have echoed my assessment exactly. The divergence from self-evident logic is key. Hypothesis The illogical relationship with, uh, between would-be saviors and suffering populace is another result of the unpredictable nature of mortal hearts. Any property or ability has inherent advantages and disadvantages. Yet never have I encountered such a unique detriment. It appears that those who share your metaphysical capabilities are prone to complicating simple cognitive processes. An undesirable quantity. I will, however, persist in furthering my understanding of the subject. <laughs> Query. Prior to formulating our next step, I wish to know. Who is this Lucina? The Imperial mentioned. <laughs> oh god. Acknowledged. To summarize, insufficient data on foreign culture resulted in inadvisable and ultimately fatal action. Yeah. Yep. I witnessed such self-destructive behavior during the course of our planetary conquests. Overwhelmed enemy forces would voluntarily withdraw into perilous regions, leading to, su to a succession of inevitable, inevitable losses. Tangential data request. I wish to learn about burial customs. Oh, the practice has ever seemed in no, uh, nonsense, <laughs> nonsensical. But new data suggests it arises from the same source as your cognitive complications. Take me to this Lucino's burial site. It may and uh, it may aid me in understand. Stand. Are you, is he okay? Hello? Oh! Energy delivery systems compromised. Core temperature critically low. Oh, it's too cold for him. Bleep! Warning. Immediate heating required. Request. Apply friction to the outer frame. Okay. Much needed pets. Um, how to warm. Oh, never mind. Rub, rub, rub. Pet, pet, pet! Rub, 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 rub! Rub! Bloop! Bleep! Temperature nominal. Energy levels stabilizing. The creators of this model must have experienced impaired cognitive reasoning during the design process. Upon our return, I will request additional climate shielding as well as an accurate temperature sensor array. This will not affect my combat uh, my combat capabilities, but it should improve my basic s survival rate. <laughs> Reconfirming sub-destination. In which direction will we find the victor spoils? Blip. Acknowledged. Alpha, you are to remain in close proximity. Close enough to envelop me in your feathers. <laughs> you are permitted to carry me on your back, if you so choose. Oh! oh that's so cute! <laughs> They're buddies! Oh, I love it. It's too cute. That's so interesting. We're actually going back to Lucina's grave. And Victor spoils. Like, I didn't think we'd, we'd be, like, brought up again. <laughs> 
but I guess it gives uh, Omega some curiosity and wants to understand it. Ooh! Someone's there. Blip. A deceptively deep snowdrift almost defeated me. But we have successfully arrived at the location you indicated. Blip. Caution advised. There is someone there. Yes. An unknown individual appears to be investigating the object of my interest. I think I know who it is. Hmm? You're Eorzea's champion, are you? Nemu Okire. Isn't he the guy from... Tertium? The train? Where he was, like, really badly wounded? Is he? Oh, I never introduced myself, did I? I'm Manius, soldier of the First Legion and comrade of Eulis. Perhaps you remember me from Tertium? We spoke about collecting Cerulean, and later on, and again later on, after Lord Quintus had passed. I see! Oh, 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 So he was from Tertium, but he's not the soldier that was, like, really badly injured on the train. I remember him. Manius. Explanation requested. What is the reason of your presence here? That must be the tiniest magic tech weapon I- Uh, no. It's just an oddly shaped communicator, isn't it? In any case, I have nothing to worthy to report. I heard that the sisters who used to live in my sector were buried here, so I thought I'd come and pay my respects. Oh. Alpha No and Alize told me the story, complete with profuse apologies. Though they had, the, though they were adamant that no amount of remorse could erase the tragedy of what come to pass, uh, came to pass. Not that my fellow soldiers and I are in any place to judge. We were manipulated. Fooled into starting an insurrection which led to countless deaths among our own countrymen. Objection. The casualties incurred through your infighting are distinct from those caused by the Elzebar contingent. To restate... You are justified in seeking restitution from the continent, uh, from the contingent, for causing the deaths of Lucina and her sister. Retaliation for damages sustained is also a logical progression. Uh, damn. I can deduce two reasons why you do not initiate hostiles with Nemu and her allies. One. You judge your remaining forces too weakened to contend effectively on the uh, with the contingent. Bruh. Two. Your emotions are complicating the issue. Bro. Tell me, which of these is correct? Well, when you lay it out like that. Oh my god. Um, I'm afraid my answer isn't like to win me any medals. So would you mind keeping this to yourselves? Sure. There's the unspoken thought that we are outmatched on the battlefield, certainly. The real reason I'm not demanding a restitution has little to do with weighing the odds. The simple truth is that I'm so caught up with the simple survival that I have no strength to spare for past grievances. Yeah, the same goes for avenging my any comrades we've lost. Be that my brothers in arms, or Lord Quintus himself. Yeah, they don't have any time. Although it seems, it seems everyone has an opinion about the manner of his passing. Mm. Some say he should have fought until the end. 
that he abandoned us to the enemy. Others praised him for taking the full burden of responsibility and freeing us to walk our own path. I don't know who's right or who's wrong, but I'm inclined to side with the latter. He gave us the choice of freedom, and that's the choice I made. Yeah. I could cry and rant and rage, but what would be the point? I'll save my energy for worrying about the next metal, uh, for the next meal, my next meal, my next task. I need to focus on the ones left behind, on making some, uh, some kind of life for my comrades and me. And if I need to lean on the contingent to do that, then that's what I'll do. Even if their aid comes at a price, I'm willing to pay it. Oh. Even amongst our own, there are times when cooperation demands compromise. What matter that they're outsiders? Besides, I think I could grow to like Elfano and Alize. They reached out to us with kindness and compassion from the very beginning. Oh. Summation. Your desire to survive. Even should it mean allying with the Contingent, was a feeling you had already harbored. That your side had committed worse atrocities was the logic you invented later to justify your reasoning. Blunt but accurate, I suppose. The heart is honest about what it wants, even if the mind takes a while to reconcile with the decision. Well, this has been oddly cathartic, but I must return to my duties. There are wild beasts to cull, watch fires to light, supplies to transport. Even without an emperor, there's no rest for the imperial, for an imperial. Oh. Be well, and stay safe. You too. Good luck. Upon review of recent input, I have arrived at an unexpected conclusion. I have been formulating my assessments on the premise that it was man who commanded the strength of his heart. But the data suggests the opposite is true. The surge of spirit, of feelings, of emotions can entangle your thoughts to such a degree that even control over your own behavior is compromised. It seems a most counterproductive specification. This also explains why my interactions with mortal subjects have produced more confusion than clarification. It presents a formidable barrier to my uh, to understanding. My earlier hypothesis has been borne out. The suboptimal operation been being conducted here is the result of emotionally compromised reasoning. I am ready to progress to my third and final query. I would learn more of those referred to as ancients. It is clear that this group was a crucial factor of the final days but the information contained in the report was insufficient to form an overview. The Loperets are creations of the ancients and are said to maintain repositories of their knowledge. By my calculations, the base of these moon dwellers will provide the best source of additional data. Telepo uh, teleport us to their burrow, Nemu. 
Preferably before my battery freezes over. <laughs> sure. <laughs> da 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 da! Na na na! I love. Quick, quick, quick! Your teleportation spell was successful. We appear to have arrived at the location described as Bestway's Burrow. An inspection of the technology in use here would give me detailed insight into the ancients and their civilization. This body, however, lacks my previous frame's advanced observational functionality. I will require external assistance. Hmm? No, it can't be. Growing way! Oh, it is you! Oh, Nemu, I've missed you so! <gasps> What's this you've brought with you? This soft, feathery vision? We... We've been outfluffed! <laughs> packed up, pack up the moon! It's all over! <laughs> No, you're still cute! Why bother with burrow building bunnies when you could walk around with this adorable avian engineer? Just bake me into a pie and be done with it! <laughs> oh no! It's okay. You're still cute. <laughs> Inspect our inventions? Wait, so... You're not done with us? I wasn't truly worried, of course. And I certainly wasn't about to roll myself in dough and dive into Cooking Way's new oven. Oh, no. Ahem. If a technical breakdown is what you need, then I am your lopperet. As the resident atmospheric regulation expert, I can afield any question or query you might care to pose. Bloop. Acceptable. I will employ this being to guide me around the facilities. Your presence is not mandatory. Even locked within my current chassis, I instill an autonomous construct that has endured hundreds of your life cycles. I am capable of completing this simple objective alone. Uh, okay. Sh sure? Cutscene? Ooh! Objective complete. Um... What happened to Growing Way? After my 50th questions, his responses began to suffer noticeable delays. <laughs> By that stage, we had viewed a representative cross-section of Loperit Engineering. Thus, I deemed it unnecessary to retain his company. Oh my god, you overwhelmed him. <laughs> Conclusion. Extrapolating uh, from the faction of technology on display, the full spectrum of the ancient's advancements was, at minimum, equivalent to a level 4 civilization. Level 4? A fact which demands uh, further investigation. Despite establishing a near-ideal society, these beings nevertheless harbored a weakness which invited self-destruction. In studying them, I stand to gain a greater understanding of Sir's anomalous decision. Growing Way informed me that another type of ancient made entities exist upon this satellite. One they the one they call the Watcher. Ah! Oh. I would speak to him. Yes, let's go. Blip. Then conserve your ether. We will ride this Argos to our destination, as you have suggested. Argos! Let's go! Good 
boy. Who's a good boy? He's a good boy. Quay, 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 quay. Bloop. Impendence detected. The creature identified as Argos refuses to acknowledge our presence. Oh, oh yeah, right. Hypothesis. Upon our arrival, Drawingway expressed concern that he had been outfluffed. This suggests the existence of a fluff-based hierarchy. <laughs> My station in such a system would be predict uh, predictably low, but Argos is adamant in ignoring even Alpha. Its fluffiness level is impossible to gauge. <laughs> but he recognizes me, because, yeah. Argos turns to you with an impassive gaze. It seems you will need to intervene. <laughs> You're the fluffiest, fluffiest of them all, dear Argos. <laughs> oh, that's so cute! Argos gives an exasperated snort before motioning to his back. It seems you have permission to climb aboard. You have secured the creature's permission? Curious. Is it your fluffy tail which provides such exemplary standing in the hierarchy? Bleep. I, allow I have allowed myself to become distracted. <laughs> Let us continue on to the Watcher at once. Oh. <laughs> Omega's bottom of the fluff chain? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what input he has for to say to Omega. Quay, 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 quay. Bleep. The watcher located. An estimate of this being's height explains the inconvenient scale of Bestway's burrow. I was bemused by the arrival of these small visitors. But I see they are companions of yours. What a rare thing for my abode to be thus crowded. How may I be of service to you? Hello, Watcher. My purpose here is to learn more about the ancients. I would know of their deeds, their philosophies, the very nature of their hearts. I would understand why the final days was, visit uh, was visited upon my home star. A worthy endeavor. But there is another better suited to assisting you with that task. Perhaps you might favor us with a tale or two of the ancients you met during your travels, Nemu. My fragmented memories would be pa uh, would be a pale substitute indeed for the clarity of your more recent exper experiences. <gasps> can we go to Elpis? I don't think we can. Can we? Oh, uh, we're just gonna regale him of our tales, I guess. Yeah, there you go. No. I like how she's telling this, like, She's talking so much. Yes. I can envision every detail. Your meeting with Vana and Emmet Silk and Hithlodeus. The sorrow and determination of Haramis. I am a creation of Hydaelyn. And as such, I believed the age of the ancients would fade and be forgotten. Yet knowing that their memory lives so vividly within you, it brings me great joy. I pray you keep them close to your heart. At the time of your journey to the past, the one whose essence I embody would have been a scholar at the at Anadir. 
A shame. Had you reason to go there, perhaps you might have met. Yeah. Would be cool. As a man of learning, he was firm friends with Bana. They spent long hours training theories, or debating lo the laws of the universe. I remember joining her faction as the final days bore down upon us. Yet of the events surrounding that tragedy, I recall precious little. Heidelin wished for the people of your age to decide their own path. Thus, I suspect my recollection was limited by design. Yet even she could not cut away one persistent memory. I feel most distinctly his sadness at, was uh, at what was come to pass. That in becoming Heidelin's heart, Bana would forever and stand apart from the people she so loved. Oh. If she were so resolved in her convictions, then he too would share her sleepless vigil over the future yet to unfold. Thus was the vow he made to Bana as her transformation took hold. His fervent wish would, uh, must have reached her in some fashion. For though his life was drained away by the summoning, he was born with new form and new purpose when I awoke as the Watcher of the Moon. And you heard, Nemu. You felt. You thought. Hear, feel, think! And in seizing the future for yourselves, have you brought full circle the saga which Vana began? What you accomplished was so divine miracle was no divine miracle. It was but a beacon of hope, passed down from one generation to the next. A succession of wishes and prayers reshaping the star into the world we knew you deserved. You have our deepest gratitude. I thank you not only as myself, but as the man I once was, and on behalf of those who devoted themselves to Vanaa's vision. He didn't have to thank us. Bloop. Bloop. I understand the facts of your story, Nemu. But not how you have chosen to process them. On what grounds do you speak of Vana with such fondness? By sundering the world, she ultimately guided your kind to victory, yet in doing so caused irreparable damage to its individual members. The full scale of that act is beyond calculation. It is evident, however, that it resulted in a protracted period of suboptimal existence for Emmet Selk and his brethren. Query. If the survival of your kind is the deciding factor in your evaluation, then you should not also then should you not also admire Hermes and his decision to subject man to the to a trial, forcing you to change or perish perish, as was the fate of countless civilizations before you. From my perspective, his determination was similar to that of the Omicron's ancestors, those who first began trading flesh for machine, so that our people might stand against the onslaught of aggression from the other races. Hmm. It was an unprecedented attempt, accompanied by much failure and sacrifice. Their early experiments were crude, primitive, had they not made those at first advances, however, we would have remained vulnerable to our environment. The violence would have utterly consumed us. And what of Emmet Silk himself? Judging by your retelling, he was a, benev a benevolent ally saddled with a tragic fate. Yeah. 
Yet I remember the years when my instruments fed me data from events across the entire star. During that time, I witnessed his Asians engineer multiple instances of cataclysmic uh, strife. These calamities, as you know them, were responsible for planet-wide destruction. A man whose endgame relied upon the extinction, extinction, extinction of all <laughs> modern mortals must, by definition, be your worst enemy. Hmm. She's so expressive here. <laughs> I required an answer. As a being of heart and soul, how do you classify each of these pivotal, uh, pivotal figures? From your perspective, which of them was most justified in their actions? Oh, fuck. Wait a minute. What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. I heard that there is like options to pick from and like I guess this is it what the f uh, it you really have to think huh it's so hard to think mm, what's justifiable for their actions it could be all of them it could be one of them or it could be none of them god damn uh I guess I'll be neutral and say that they were all justified in their own way. Yeah. I'll I'll that's what I'll go with. I feel like they did it for the love of their star, I guess. So I think they're justifiable in their own way. I think I understand. You seek a definitive answer, yet based on our experiences, Nimu and I might develop very different opinions. In the same fashion, you are free to roam your own thoughts on the matter. Do not be so swift to consider them without merit. Oh. I do not have my own thoughts on the matter. I assess each situation with the same logic pathways av available to every Omicron. Even if a thousand Omicrons were asked to analyze the same event, they would all return to the same result, regardless of individual experience. There is no strength to be found in factured reasoning. Nonetheless, I find your input valuable. Recording Dana alongside the interview results. This concludes my investigation into the incomplete elements of the final day's report. I will reanalyze the accumulated information and examine the factors to which led Sir's incomprehensible decision. Let us return to Thomasine. Ah. Uh. It was pleasant to hear your tales of Elpis. Should you ever need audience similar, uh, familiar with the subject, I would be glad to listen more of your recollections. Oh, even with one gains fixed upon the future, we oft times find our thoughts drifting to the past. It is a shame that Heidelin never chose to speak of it. Oh, oh, you, you're so good. Okay, let's head back. That was so interesting. I suppose none of the none of the answers that were given were like it didn't matter in the end. So no matter what answer you chose, it's like it just leads to the same conclusion, I guess, and not different ones. I think. Possibly that's what it is. I wouldn't know unless I look at the other responses. Hello. You had a fruitful trip, I hope. 
I am absolutely bursting to ask about your experiences with Omega, but I don't wish to be a pest. I will swallow my questions for now and maintain my academic decorum. Uh, decorum. Besides, it seems our engineering friends are in a hurry to leave. Namu, I wasn't sure you'd be back in time. Like quick, quick. <laughs> ah, there you are, right at the last moment. Your journey with Omega was properly educational, I hope. We'd planned to ask you all about it and that mystery transmission besides. But I'm afraid something urgent has come up. Seems one of our Ironworks associates has fouled up a job elsewhere, and Jesse needs Wedge and me to rush in and lend a hand. There's an airship ready for or waiting for us at the harbor, in fact. Do you think you can escort us over there and talk as we walk? Acceptable. I am fully capable of speech during ambulation. I figured you might be. Right, let's get a move on then. What's the gift? Oh, music! So... You've cleared up all the points of confusion, then. Maybe? I had mistakenly classified your tangible heart as an, as an ability of some kind. Interesting. An uncanny power that Omicrons would neither learn nor even measure. Even now, its full nature yet eludes my comprehension. Based upon our investigations, however, I have decided to alter my definition. A phenomenon which influences one's interpretation of reality. That is as close to an answer as I have found. Ah. Uh... Accordingly, Sir's actions upon meeting Meteon strongly indicate the presence of a heart. Sir did not follow routine logic, but formulated an independent assessment based upon the reality it perceived. It felt that the best recourse for the Omicrons was to cease their expansion and terminate all functions. Oh. Here's our ship! Aye, we need to be going. But first, I'll hold you to your bargain, Omega. It's time you told us what was in that transmission from the flight logs, okay? Blip. Acknowledged. I will uphold the terms of our agreement. The recording salvaged from the Ragnarok was a simple one. The message is so basic, in fact, 
that the time spent listening to it may result in a net loss of value. Shall I continue? Now you're just teasing! Tell us the message already! Acknowledge. Converting dialect coding to local language. To whoever receives this message out there in the vast reaches of cosmos, of the cosmos. To someone, I hope, who looks up at the stars with the same wistful gaze as mine. To you, I say, forge ahead. May all our tomorrows be blessed with joy. This message had no designated recipient. It lacks purpose. The concept of joy is overly abstract. The vocal supplication to manifest said joy is unrealistic in its optimism. It based upon their expressions. My assessment of the transmission's value conflicts with its apparent impact. And still, I fail to understand you, sir. Your heart still confuses me. I think it is from sir. I think. Was termination of everything the correct course? How did you arrive at this conclusion? It defies all of my attempts at reasoning. But I was designed to evolve. If I continue to learn, the probability that I eventually comprehend his phenomenon is greater than zero. So I will put the dilemma of your decision aside for now. And continue my existence upon this distant star. As I dwell among these many life forms, so I will I continue to piece together the complete shape of their mortal hearts. I must document their progress. Oh god, <laughs> I got very emotional there. <laughs> Oh, I think it was from Sir. Click, click. Oh, kind of had that feeling too. Yeah. Oh. Oh, my heart. Your contribution to my education is appreciated, Nemu. Indeed, I have amassed a satisfying quantity of valuable data. Now that our negotiated business is complete, however, Alpha and I will continue tra to traveling the world. <laughs> oh. Drawing on, on, re on recent experience, I am confident we can expand the radius of our ventures by a significant margin. Oh! We need not limit ourselves to Eorzea. 
I am now familiar with Charlien and Ratzat Han, and would also like to revisit freezing climbs of Garlem. Bloop! <laughs> I neglected to construct. Uh, oh no! I neglected to instruct Biggs and Wedge to upgrade my climate shielding. Bloop! I will reroute my request to Deputy President Jesse. <laughs> oh my god! He was so deep in thought, he totally forgot to make the request. <laughs> Engaging ambulition and parting salutations. Farewell, Nemu. Oh my god! <laughs> Bye, Alpha! Alpha gives a vigorous shake and draws forth a scrap of paper from under his wing. Quit! It seems he wants you to have it. Perhaps this is his way of thanking you? Um, thank you. <gasps> oh! Oh, it's music! Oh! Oh! Bleep. Swiftly, Afa. The road is long and we have barely begun our journey. Oh, that's so cute! <laughs> oh! That was so good! That was so good! <laughs> I feel like this is... I don't know if there's gonna be any more of like uh of, of their adventures in the future updates but if it's gonna be the last one this is a very good way to end it oh my god that was so good i got a bit emotional there <laughs> understanding of the heart It fills their it, it fills in their study pretty well. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I, I very much agree.